Today, we're going to talk about all things salt. And did you know that not all salt is created equal? Might be obvious, but to some it's not. And today's guest is Mr. Michael Silic III. Mr. Silic is the Chief Mineral Officer of Baja Gold Salt Company. He is the Head of Sales and Marketing for C Agri, the parent company of Baja Gold and C90. Michael loves innovation and building products to help improve the world. He has previously worked on everything from cookware to mattresses to airplanes, and now trying to improve the quality of our food supply with mineral sea salt. Mr. Michael Silic, welcome to the show. Welcome to Simply Walk the Talk. Our bodies and minds adapt to what we do most of the time. If you want to change your body and mind, you must change what it is you do most of the time. This podcast explores all things health, wellness, fitness, lifestyle, and biohacking. Stay tuned as we explore various thoughts, methods, and experiences from a multitude of conversations between our interesting guests and experts through many fields of work. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Simply walk the Simply walk the talk. Yeah. Thanks a lot for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for coming and thank you for your time. You know, uh, as we started talking before recording today, I was describing to you like how I even came across Baja Salt Company and. I, I'm, I think I mentioned that there was some kind of email or newsletter that I came across, which obviously shows that, that online marketing is very valuable, right? Because here we are now speaking about it. And when, like, I've been a huge fan of salt and, and minerals in general. Um, and it's one of those things that is very confusing to the average listener, to the average client or person that's online, because we hear things about blood pressure and, and cholesterol, and we hear all of these things. And yet I see salt as being one of those things. And I should preface this, good salt is great for us. In fact, it's a superfood or super mineral, if you want to call it that. However, the refined salts and the poor lifestyles and poor diet, that's where we can get into trouble. It's, it's just like talking about quality meat versus quality vegetables versus quality water, right? And so there's a spectrum on all of this. And I wanted to bring you on today because I feel like you can provide some insight and hopefully you can educate some of the people on the show by letting them know that salt is not bad for you if you do it right. So I'd like to start there. I'd like to start with, um, let's start with your background. I know I touched on a little bit of that in your bio, but let's talk about your background so that people can fully understand why you're even here to talk about salt in the first place. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, like you had mentioned up front, thank you for that introduction. Um, love working on new products or bringing product improvements to the world to help improve people's lives and um, have always kind of touched on health and wellness products throughout my career. Uh, previously worked on cookware. So, you know, kind of dabbling in nutrition there, uh, mattresses, um, which is a really interesting space. And there's been a significant amount of research into the quality of sleep uh, or sorry, the the impact that quality sleep can have on your life and on your health and wellness. Um, and so uh, a couple of years ago, actually, my family and I got involved in the C Agri company. And C Agri has, like you mentioned, Baja Gold Salt Company and C90 Ocean Minerals, which is our agriculture brand of products. And um, we are focused on improving the reputation of salt within the world and helping to educate people on how salt is different. Uh, like you mentioned, I think you put it perfectly. There is a spectrum of different types of salt, and we can walk the listeners through that today. Um, and we we truly believe that our products can help improve the quality of our food supply and can help improve the health and wellness of people uh, and in their diets and their athletic performance and uh, in their mental performance as well. And so um, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to be working on these products. Um, been an incredible journey over the last four years. Uh, truly an international journey where we are building partnerships and collaborations across countries, across different continents. And uh, it's just been an absolute blessing. And we're, we're super psyched about it. Um, and we think we're just at the beginning of this big mountain that we're trying to climb. Beautiful. 
beautifully put. The the mountain of salt, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, when you when you touched on the mattresses piece and the sleeping piece, like for I think the average person might think, yeah, but like what does that have to do with with what you're doing now? And to your point, sleep is very, very important. In fact, in in my book that I wrote called The Awareness Shift, uh, the the second pillar, which is I feel like one of the most important pillars is quality rest, which includes sleep. And, and then I obviously started thinking about like this, this idea when you, especially when you mentioned like the mountain, right? The mountain of salt, this idea of better, better breathing through salt and how, how that can help. You know, I have these uh, salt lamps in my apartment and I use this, um, this, this, it's called like a, it's called like a neti pot, but it's, it's, it, no, it's called pocket neti. And the pocket netty has salt inside of it with essential oils, and you just put it up to your nose and you breathe that in. And so I, there's so many applications for salt beyond just consuming it, right? So that's where I would like to kind of get your expertise so that we can really start to pave a pathway for people to start understanding that we should be using more, not necessarily less. So can you, can you touch on that? Let's, let's maybe open up this conversation at the point in which most people come to you with questions, like what kind of questions are you getting and what are your responses? Thanks. I, I think um, maybe it's interesting to start kind of at the beginning and um, start talking about the role of salt within our civilization. You mentioned there's so many uses for it and people have discovered those uses over centuries. And um, salt, uh, when you go back many, many millennia, um, it's such a critical part of how human civilization uh, traveled the world, kind of went to different uh, lands and, and settled in different areas. Um, salt, the word salt has root, uh, Latin roots in the word for salary. Um, and salarium was actually the Latin word for uh, salary. And so you can see that kind of prefix with sal there. And um, salt was just an incredibly important thing because it not only had these incredible benefits to people, but it was also very rare at the time. And so you combine those two things together and that's, you know, something that is of incredible importance to a civilization and a society. That, that's where the phrase to be worth your salt comes from. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so you kind of go back many, many centuries. And if you can imagine all of the salt back then is actually what we would classify as a good unrefined sea salt. Um, and at the time, without electricity, without other uh, readily available ice, for example, um, salt was used as a, as a preservative for food. And so, as, as, uh, again, as people were traveling the globe, um, trying to bring food along with them, salt was an incredibly important part of their culture and of society. Um, and it was really interesting because at the time, salt was never um, demonized, if you will. It was just some, something that was so critical to supporting health and wellness, supporting travel, um, and just supporting the growth of civilization. Um, people actually fought wars over salt. Um, the French Revolution, there was a salt tax that was placed on, on the population and it led to the French Revolution. So um, it, was, it was a very, very important, meaningful part of people's lives. And um, over time, the, the role of salt has kind of been, it's, it's just been changed and it's uh, gotten really a bad reputation uh, because of several things that happened along the way. And, uh, you know, like with many things, um, unfortunately, a, stri a striving for convenience and low cost within this space has really uh, led to the demonization of salt because we've been able to significantly add it in foods that really it doesn't belong in. Uh, but we've also changed what salt looks like and what it is uh, comprised of uh, to a, in a way that the, the table salt that you would find at your kitchen table or at a diner table today is in no way representative of what salt used to be hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Well said. Absolutely well said. Yeah, because it, it's like, obviously, like I explained earlier and like you you touched on as well is like, not all salt is created equal. And so that should bring up this question of, okay, well, what has changed? And, and that brings me to the next point, at least in, in coming in contact with Baja Gold Company, salt companies, because I noticed that in the marketing, the, this salt comes from Mexico or the Aztec regions, right? And if I'm being completely honest, when I first saw that, I had pause because I was like, well, wait a minute. Um, isn't the water in Mexico like not 
healthy for us to drink. So then obviously, like I, I wanted to ask you about that. Like, is there a certain like process or did you guys find a certain region that was completely unrefined? Like, what is the process there? Yeah, it's a great question. And so it's important to distinguish between our source of ocean water and, um, you know, other water sources within Mexico. So what I can assure the audience is that we use exclusively ocean water from the Sea of Cortez. Uh, the Sea of Cortez is also sometimes called the Gulf of California. Um, so this is an incredibly pristine and pure body of water that's on the western part of the North American hemisphere. So I always want to use because it's important. It's not the Gulf of Mexico. That is not what we're talking about here. With, uh, various oil rigs and various other yeah. things that you can kind of do your own research on. We're on the western part of mainland Mexico, and the Sea of Cortez is virtually free from any type of work environments or oil rigs, anything of that nature. And what's really cool about this is that uh, it is fully encapsulated by Mexico. And the Mexican government takes great pride in actually maintaining the purity and the pristine quality of that body of water. Um, they view it as a point of national pride. And um, the Sea of Cortez, a fun fact is Jacques Cousteau, who's a famous explorer, um, he actually came across the Sea of Cortez once upon a time, several hundred years ago. And he said, wow, it's such a beautiful, diverse body of water that we should call this the world's aquarium. And people said, what do you mean by that? He said, I found more unique marine life here than anywhere else in the world. It was almost like the Galapagos Islands, but the water version of that. So if you're in the Sea of Cortez, you will see such an incredible array of marine life. You'll see all types of whales and sharks and fish and other marine life that uh, you won't see in normal kind of ocean body water, if you will. So uh, we source our water exclusively from the Sea of Cortez. Um, and I shouldn't really use the word source. We allow Sea of Cortez to flood into retention ponds um, and we let the sun dehydrate that ocean water. And that is all that we do. There is um, no pumping. There's no drying. There's no processing. There's no additives. It is exclusively taking this incredibly pure body of water, dehydrating it with just the sun and then bagging it as Baja Gold Sea Salt. Thanks. It's amazing. And, and I'm not just saying this because I have you on the show. I, I think one of the other things that prompted me to, to bring you on today is because while I was in Toronto, like not too long ago, I decided to, to do some content because I, I love showing people a little bit of like what I do behind the scenes. And I found myself making a bone broth like I typically like to do, especially when it's cold out. So I made, I was making a bone broth and what's interesting is, is that the so. bone broths of today, especially the powdered versions, they tout, uh, low sodium, which might make the average person think, well, we should stay away from salt, but here I am putting in the salt drops, right? Because it's different, right? The, the, the low sodium should make people think like, this is actually low in refined salts. But then when you can re-add in salt, it, it's kind of like uh, taking reverse osmosis water. More and more people today know that if you want to have the healthiest water, you need to remineralize that, right? And the remineralization usually comes from salt, the quality salt. So I just, I wanted to point that out. In fact, um, uh, Gordon, I sent the, the link to that, uh, that Instagram reel that I created just in case people didn't get a chance to see it. But it's, I, I think it's kind of fun. One, because I, I literally did burn my, my, uh, my tongue when I was drinking it because I forgot that it was like piping hot water. <laughs> um, but it adds such a nice flavor to your foods or to whatever you're putting it in. Here, here's the, here's the, uh, the reel here. So here I am pouring it, stirring it. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't faking that there. That was, that was really too hot. Let's try that. Please. Put some uh, cold water into it. But, you know, in, in the description there, I talk about the importance of having bone broth. I like to talk about um, intermittent fasting, and I use that as a big part of my, my day. However, we, we should know that if we are sweating, we're working out, we're doing the sauna, we're doing the things we're supposed to be doing from a physical perspective, then where are we getting minerals? Especially if we're reducing the amount of intake, then where are we getting our minerals? 
And so if you're not taking like Shilajit or, or you're not taking proper supplements, then you can start as simple as putting a couple drops under your tongue in the morning when you wake up. And that's what I do. I do that. And then I add it to, you know, my foods. So maybe you can touch on that and, and, and maybe even talk about like the difference in your salt versus the other salt. Cause I know you have a, a page we can pull up here, but I got, I want to kind of dive into that so people understand that there is a difference. Absolutely. So at the beginning, you had mentioned kind of what's the first question that people usually ask you. And it's usually that it's how is your salt different? What is it about this that is different from what I'm used to using for salt for the first 20, 30, 40 years of my life, right? Um, so uh, you also mentioned this idea of a spectrum of different salts. So let's lay that out for the listener if we can. So I'm going to start with what I would consider poor quality salts. So on the poor quality salt spectrum, you're going to have what I would call refined table salt. Um, you can see on the website there, there's a brand name. I won't mention that, but there's, you know, your, your classic, um, you know, round cylinder table salt, um, you pour it. And a key piece of this is that it flows incredibly well, right? And people think, oh, that's so convenient. And that is actually why this form of salt um, became so popular over the last 80 years or so because of that convenience. Um, unfortunately, in order to make salt flow like that, you need to do one of two things and possibly both. The first is you're going to heat that salt to the point where there is zero moisture at all left over and zero mineral benefits left over as well. So you are going to result in a salt that is exclusively sodium chloride or NaCl. Some, in some cases, those salt companies are also adding what are called anti-caking agents or flowing agent. Um, there are various different types of these. There are organic forms. There are synthetic forms. There are some that contain um, things that I don't want to put in my body. I'll put it that way. Um, I would highly recommend reviewing the ingredients list. They have to disclose these on the packaging and you'll be able to see exactly what's in your salt. So that's going to be what I would consider, again, a poor quality table salt. When you hear about reducing your sodium intake, largely that is what people are referring to. Physicians are going to say, hey, reduce your pure sodium chloride intake, reduce that pure white flowing table salt uh, because it has such a little, uh, such a uh, essentially negative impact and such low positive impacts in any way because it's not tied to other minerals and trace salt. Now, the second uh, type of salt that I would consider kind of a yellow form of salt, if you will, it's kind of in the middle there, right? It's going to be an earth salt or a rock salt. And an earth salt or a rock salt is created millions of years ago or thousands of years ago when oceans were captured due to tectonic plate activity or other mountain movement activity and captured underneath the earth, underneath mountains, and ultimately discovered many thousands of years later by humans. And so what has happened in those thousands of years is that that ocean has dried up, the salts have crystallized, and you're left with this underground rock salt. Um, one key distinguishing factor that you're typically going to see is a pink color in this salt. And you might say, gosh, that's, that's really cool, right? It looks awesome. Um, you know, typically your pink Himalayan type of salt is what I'm referring to here. This does maintain some of the mineral and trace element content. But what has happened over time is that it has dried out to such an extent and it has sat underneath other minerals in the earth that the minerals have actually kind of exchanged in and out with one another. And so a key characteristic of this is not only the pink color, but also excess iron, which actually gives it that pink color. You know, um, I encourage you to do your own research on iron and iron levels. Um, this is, uh, again, a better form of salt than a table salt, but you're not getting kind of that pure mineral and trace element balance that is present in living ocean water the way that you would with the third type of salt, which again, this is on the, the far great side of the spectrum now, and this is going to be an unrefined sea salt. Some people call this um, like French gray style sea salt. You might hear the term Celtic style sea salt. Celtic is also a brand. And Baja Gold is the world's healthiest form of an unrefined sea salt. And what is an unrefined sea salt? An unrefined sea salt is when you take living ocean water from a very mineral-rich body of water, and you exclusively dry it with the sun, and then you gather it up and uh, package it. And that's it. 
And so you want to make sure that you are not exposing it to excessive heat. You're not putting it into a uh, kiln for drying. You're not doing any synthetic chemical removing of minerals and trace elements. And the minerals and trace elements remain in the balance and in the proportions that you would find them in in the ocean. So you go from down the spectrum here, you're going to have a lot of bright white salts. You're going to have your pink salts. And then you're going to have more of like a gray beige colored salt like Baja Gold. And on this, on, on the, the far side here, you're going to have lower sodium chloride, which Gordon has pulled up on the screen here. And then corresponding to that, you also have higher mineral and trace element content. So Baja Gold, we believe, is the world's healthiest sea salt because of these two factors. Number one, you're able to reduce your sodium intake, even if you ingest the same amount uh, in grams, if you will, of salt every day. If you go from a table salt to a Baja Gold salt, you're going to reduce the amount of sodium chloride you take in by anywhere from 15 to 25%. And you're also now taking in valuable minerals and trace elements all of which are going to be higher than any other salt on the market there. And Gordon, if you scroll down, there's another table at the bottom um, that the viewer and the listener would be able to actually see various different um, branded salts and the comparisons of their magnesium, potassium, calcium, and then all other minerals and trace elements are also on our website there. So it's huge. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, that's that's huge. For, for those for only listening, like definitely mark this moment because what we've pulled up, or you can just go to the website, which we'll list in the show notes. But um, what Michael has pointed out here is pretty profound because we've discussed here on the show, this relationship between sodium and potassium, and it's very important. So if a person just blanketly says, reduce your salt intake, that that is going to have an effect on your potassium which is then going to have an effect on your Basal. the sodium potassium ion exchange right that that pump that is important in the process of performance right and so i used to deal a lot with cramping and the very classic piece of advice from anyone really that has a brain would would tell you take in more bananas right because it has potassium but it's not quite that easy because there has to be other things to allow that to be complete. And so um, one of the things I wanted to touch on while you were talking about the anti-caking agents and things like that is I wanted to grab my, my salt that I have here just so we can see that. So just hold for one moment. Of course. Yeah. Thanks. So. Thanks. So now this is, this is straight from the, uh, from the kitchen. So I didn't do anything to it. Uh, however, what I did do is, and, and maybe this is something that that comes about with the company. You might already you might already have a solution for this, but I received my uh, Baja Gold salt in this bag, and then I also have the dropper. But because it's uh, you know I wanted to reduce the amount of moisture that get, gets into it, I decided to put it into its own little container, right? And if you see this container here, you see how it's kind of caked up. I thought I was doing something wrong. Thanks, so. No, you're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> I'm not doing anything wrong. And so I'm glad you pointed that out because, you know, I, I find myself opening this up, shaking it onto my food and then having to hit the top. But that just goes to show that this is a very healthy salt because there's no preservatives or anti-caking agents in there. So I can be proud and happy that this is this is what I'm getting, you know. So this is exclusive, exclusively what I use now. So thank you for sharing that. Thanks. No, absolutely. And we do have a lot of our first time customers that write in and say, uh, it seems like it's a little moist. It's a little damp. Um, doesn't necessarily work in a salt shaker like I'm used to. Um, and that is, it's important to point that out. It, it is going to have a little bit more moisture than a traditional off the shelf table salt. Um, but the moisture is where the mineral magic is. You need to have that dampness in there. Um, when you create table salt, you subject it to kiln drying that can be 500 to 1000 degrees, um, or they process it through like a vacuum evaporation process. Um, all of these things that are highly unnatural. Um, the highest temperature that Baja Gold is exposed to is uh, in, the, in the Baja region, it can get up to maybe 120 during the summer. Um, and so you are going to have a little bit of that, that moisture. But again, we're, we believe very strongly that 
the ocean is a source of vitality and it's a source of life. And there's life in that ocean water. And you need, you can't kill all of that life off just for the sake of convenience. You want to preserve that life and bring that electricity into your body through the form of Baja Gold Cecil. And maybe I can add in th- with the fact that the sun is sort of doing the drying means that you're getting all the beneficial rays from the sun, just like we should be getting from our plants and just like we should be getting from the animals that eat those plants that we then consume, right? So it's like it, this, this vitality piece is circular if we allow it to be. A hundred percent. Yep. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you pointed that out because like, obviously there's, there's other questions and, you know, and if you're happy to answer them, um, feel free to let me know if, if, if you haven't encountered this or not. But the next thing I think of is like, okay, so this is completely unrefined, right? It's just, you take this body of water that has flowed into this, this, this vat that you have, the sun dries it out. What about, I mean, do you have any issues or problems with contamination at all? It's a great question. We take the purity and quality of our products very seriously. We undergo significant third-party independent testing to verify the quality of our products. Um, so that includes testing for um, contaminants. It includes testing for microplastics, heavy metals, um, all of those big things uh, that you need to, to kind of keep an eye on. We post that all um, transparently on our website, um, on the letterhead of the, the lab. Um, so it's all very, uh, very transparent about what we have available. And that goes for not just um, the things you want to you know, watch out for, like I just mentioned, but also all of the minerals and trace elements as well, so that you can do your own comparison versus other um, salt that might be on the market uh, when you're deciding to pick a salt for you. Um, so yeah. that, what I mean by that is magnesium, potassium, uh, boron, zinc, all of those beneficial minerals. Um, what's really interesting about our product as well, and you'd have to, uh, there's a couple of pictures on our website um, and we post some on social as well, but um, we actually flow the body of water. The, and, and I say we, it's actually the, the moon doing this. It's the tide. <laughs> so, uh, the body of water over about seven to 10 miles, what's called alluvial topsoil. And um, so you have the the Sea of Cortez, if you will. It's kind of your traditional ocean, right? Um, but then there's about seven to ten miles of this topsoil, which is it's um, I don't want to use the term marshy, but it's just kind of it's, it's alluvial topsoil. It's topsoil that is high in minerals and trace elements. There's no development on it, um, and it's a little it's it's higher in moisture and whatnot because it's flooded about half the year um, before it reaches. The, uh, the retention ponds, the, the beds where we actually create the salt in. And so there's some natural filtration that actually occurs along the way um, to filter out any sort of contaminants as well, because it's kind of in and out of this topsoil. So we really, uh, I, love, I love working for this organization because um, you might think that, oh, they're so innovative. They're doing all these things. We're really not. We're bringing back the heritage creation techniques from hundreds and thousands of years ago. This was done by the Aztecs. This was done uh, by the Romans on the other side of the world. Um, and we're just using um, artisanal kind of heritage production techniques, uh, letting the earth create these beautiful products for us and then bringing them to market. So um, we do both sides of, of the coin here. We let the earth filter the product, but then we also make sure that we are testing it and verifying it in third-party laboratories. So what, what Gordon has pulled up here is some of the images from from your socials that I think makes it look really cool. And what comes to mind for me is the salt plains, you know, the, I think, is it Utah? Yes. Like, it, yeah, Utah has a lot of salt plains. What do you, what would you say would be a major difference between what, th- what they have and what you have? Sure. So Utah salt, and there's a, there's a, a famous brand out there um, as well. <laughs> um, they are what I would consider that, that middle, rock salt, earth salt category. So that is an instance where there used to be a body of water that was ultimately captured underneath mountains and underneath earth. Um, I don't know how long ago, a long, long time ago. Um, and they have a salt now that is has a little bit of a pink hue to it. Um, so many people in Utah consider that to be kind of America's pink Himalayan salt. Uh, so all of those, uh, all of those kind of, um, uh, considerations would apply there as well. It is going to have minerals and trace elements. Uh, it's not going to have them in the same proportions 
that an unrefined sea salt would. Um, so I always tell people if, if you only have access to table salt or Utah salt, Utah salt is certainly better than table salt. Um, but wherever you can try to find an unrefined sea salt like Baja gold or a Celtic style. salt. Thanks. What I love about your response there is that you you take great care and not throwing any other brand uh, brands under the, uh, under the bus. And, um, and I think that's really cool because at the end of the day, what we what what my objective here is to shed light on this topic around salt because for a long time i had been preaching from the mountaintop from the salt mountains that that we need to have salt and that you should get pink himalayan rock salt and it's amazing and then there was all this research that came out to say that actually they did a bunch of testing on some of the most popular pink himalayan rock salts out there and they had all these things like iron and uh, I think even like mercury and, and some, some other like uh, major disruptors. And so people were left with, well, well, well what do we get now? And here we are. It, this, is, this is where we are. So um, we see like you can go in and look at the, the, the prices. It's all online. Even at the end of this, we're going to, to um, I'll rattle off the discount code for everyone. But when you take what Michael was saying about being able to get more nutrients with the same amount of salt that you would otherwise, that's a real investment in your health. And I think that's very important. And I saw on, when, when Gordon had pulled up some of the socials, I saw that there was a few people that had commented on some of those videos saying like, this salt has saved my life. And that might be like dramatic for a lot of people, but it could be the difference between like getting the minerals that you need versus not. And so like, I just, I just think this is worth diving into, like you pointed out earlier, do your own research, go in and figure out what's what, and just give it a shot because this stuff, it, it tastes really good. And like, what, what I like about it is that it doesn't taste too salty. If that even makes sense. Thanks. It's, no, and we've hear, we hear that a lot um, because it is lower in sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is typically like an acidic taste. It's kind of hard to describe, but it, you know it when you taste it. Um, that added magnesium and potassium, um, that actually brings out different flavor receptors. And so um, it does taste different. Yeah. If you're used to just eating table salt. Um, the other thing we hear a lot is I actually need less on a net basis than I typically would salt my food with. So, um, you know, that's a, again, two pronged approach to health and wellness. You're reducing your sodium chloride because you're actually using a 75% sodium chloride product. And you might actually use maybe 75 to 80% of what you used to use. So, so all of these things can kind of uh, compound. Um, I just want to uh, touch on earlier what you were mentioning, kind of the importance of how this can really turn around someone's life, if you will, and, and have an, a, a real impact on their health. Uh, we're very grateful to hear comments like that. It's really, it, it is moving in some cases. Um, and we're very mindful of that, uh, of the role that we can play in that. And to, to those who kind of say, well, it's, it's just salt. How can it kind of play that much of a difference, if you will? Uh, cause they'll, you know, you'll look at the quantities and kind of, okay, it's only this much magnesium per day. How much could that really make a difference? I think salt can be one of those building blocks to your day that really starts to just kind of turn around your entire health and wellness journey. And so if in the morning you're taking the extra three minutes to take a little bit of salt, put it in your water and have a glass of water before you jump into the coffee or jump into whatever it else is that you need to do, it, it just gives you that base and that foundation to say, okay, I'm investing in myself. The rest of the day is going to go better. And you know, the, there's, there's, there's the actual physical impact and then there's the mental impact of these things. And you, you bundle those two together and that's how you make real change. Basically. Yeah, I, I think it's quite freeing as well, because when when a person is told from their doctor that their their blood, blood pressure is too high, you got to get all salt. Life all of a sudden becomes bland, Thanks. very boring. And so I, I can relate to the person that might. Thanks. I have some clients that I've worked with that have been told this very thing. So I, I in fact, I'm going to be sharing this 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 episode with said client. Said and I was. Thanks. Working with this client, trying to find all of the alternatives that are out there. But why have an alternative when you have something that is completely natural that is giving you what your body needs? Because at the end of the day, we are made up of water, 
Like, so, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yep. this, like sodium and, and, a, and a few other things, right? And like you mentioned earlier about someone saying, well, yeah, but then, come on, guys, this is just salt. Well, that's just like saying water is just water. Like, so, yep. Well said. Yeah. Right? It's subtle. Oh, so this is why we're here. This is why we're talking. This is why I think this makes sense. So I'm, I'm very, very appreciative of it. And I, I would like to know if you, if you have any other cases in which someone can maybe change their health or maybe some other like testimonials or, or, or explanations to kind of take somebody over the, over the fence here. Thanks. So one thing you mentioned earlier was uh, more and more people are paying attention to their water supply and they are looking at internal water purification um, in home water purification, um, whether that's RO water or various other filtration processes. Um, we, as you mentioned, when you strip everything out of water, it does not then really hydrate you or of course not remineralize you because there's no minerals left in it. Um, so we certainly understand that you may need to strip out the minerals because of whatever the source of the water is. No questions at all there. Uh, but when you look for a solution to put the the, uh, the healthy minerals back into your water, uh, Baja Gold is a great option for it. So um, you're able to add just a small, small amount will bring the mineral level of that water back up to what you need for proper hydration. Um, the water is going to taste a lot better. And because Baja Gold was based water and, you know, six months ago at, at the most, it actually goes into solution right away and it's much more bioavailable for your, for your uh, in digestive system. So that's a great option there. Um, we've heard from a lot, a lot of people around, you know, Baja Gold helps with their POTS syndrome. It helps with various other um, health uh, concerns, heart concerns. Um, it, it is just an incredible substitute for table salt that really does not take that much effort at all to do. And it can help you on your journey moving forward. Um, in the performance space, another area where you can use Baja Gold is as a natural Gatorade replacement. Um, so I'm not supposed to be using brand. Sorry, sorry. But this is the natural Gatorade. So um, I love telling the story. Actually, you have to use the name because original Gatorade uh, you know, came from the University of Florida, right? The athletic training staff down there, Gatorade. And they used to just use a little bit of sea salt, water, and lemon juice. And they found that that really remineralized, rehydrated their players better than just water alone. Um, And that's because of those electrolytes, because of those minerals and trace element. Um, So if you want to help recreate a natural Gatorade formula, you can actually just take Baja Gold and water and a little bit of lemon juice if you'd like for flavor. Um, and that's going to give you that performance boost, uh, whether you're pre-gym, in the gym, or after, you know, workout. Um, so that's another great option for you. So uh, a couple of things. One, for those who aren't familiar with POT syndrome, that is the postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's a condition that causes your heart to beat faster than normal. And, and so people who are dealing with that would, would know what that is uh, off, the, off the, the bat, just you mentioning that. Um, but another thing that I like to, to say, and again, I, we haven't discussed this, so I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but what I have in here, in this bottle that I'm holding up, is my RO water, so that's stripped, and then I add in um, so. this solution. It's, it's basically sodium bicarbonate, but it has a few other things in, in it, and then I hit it with the soda stream. Thanks. So. so it's basically like a magnesium bicarbonate, that's what I'm yep. creating. Yep. And then I add in the ocean minerals from, from Baja Gold. So for me, this is what I feel like is the ultimate like hydration drink. And before I discovered your products with, with Baja Gold Salt Company, I had been using, and I still do have it every once in a while, um, the Quinton. Are you familiar with the Quinton? I am, yeah. So. And, and Quinton, the, the, either the glass ampules or they came out with those little travel packs. It's, it is great. I mean, a lot of their studies show that it's one of the closest things to our blood plasma, which is amazing. It's incredible. However, I'm not so big on the plastic, the plastic that it comes in when you're using the, uh, the, the travel packs. And then quite frankly, the glass ampules get a little bit annoying after a while. I've cut my finger several times doing that. And so I'm happy that you have this dropper bottle in a glass container that is very easy. Couple drops under the tongue, couple drops in water, and it's apparently 
as good as not better, right? And now that I'm talking to you, I, I clearly realize it's better. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we yeah we're familiar with them. Uh, they have a good product as well. Um, some of the same uh, challenges that you mentioned for sure. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. And Renee Renee Quint- Quinton, Quinton is is the scientist like us. He is. That's named after. I heard a story, and and I'll just I'll say this. It, it, fact check me if it, if I'm not uh, correct on this. I heard a story. Um, and this goes back to Renee and Dr. Murray and kind of this period in the 1900s of water research and whatnot. But um, I heard a story that during one of the world wars in Europe, when there was a shortage of blood, that in order to keep a wounded soldier alive long enough to bring them to an infirmary in a true hospital, um, they would infuse the ocean water like that, that plasma um, as a temporary solution, and because that the mineral content is so similar to human blood, uh, that would actually give them an hour or so to survive to get to an infirmary where they could receive a true blood infusion. So I share that. I don't know if that is 100% true, but I've heard that many times. And I love just that link between human life and all life and the ocean. And that's all. that's really the key of that story is that mineral similarity. I'm so, so happy you brought that up because I was the crazy one always spouting out this, this quote unquote research from what I heard uh, from the Quinton folks, which is, and, and so maybe this preceded uh, what you're talking about, but apparently, and again, uh, you can fact check me and fact check Michael on this, but apparently some of the studies were done on dogs first. Okay. And that they were able to get dogs to survive like extended periods of time by doing what you just mentioned, which is replacing the blood with with uh, with this uh, Quinton, these ocean minerals, because it was so similar to the blood plasma. And I'm like, Thanks. sign me up. I'm, it works for me. You know what I mean? It makes sense to me. You know, when I'm when I was in college, I, I had, I've done so many types of odd jobs in the world, but Thanks. period of time. Uh, me and a buddy of mine, who's also named Josh, one of my best friends, we used to give plasma as like side money. And it was the first time that I understood, talk about like being worth your salt, right? Like, are you worth your plasma? Well, I was, and I could quantify that exactly how much it was worth for me. And there would be times when if I wasn't hydrated properly or, you know, like, I don't know if I just, if I wasn't living life the way I was supposed to live, I couldn't get the plasma out uh, enough to be able to get that check. And can you imagine like what that would do to me? Like, I, you know, I don't want to sit here for two hours and not get all the plasma out. And then they have to return the blood after that. And if that meant like not getting the check, that meant not being able to get the things I want. Right. And so sure, yeah. that was my first understanding of like plasma and how important plasma is because you can see it in a, tra- uh, a cent- centrifuge. You can see it being spun, the blood being spun so aggressively that the blood and the plasma actually separate. And they would take the plasma, um, actually, no, they would take the blood and then give you back the plasma, I think is how it worked, right? Something like that. Um, I don't quite remember. Maybe they gave it all back to me. Bless it. Um, so here we go. Gordon pulled it up. Give it a goo, Gordon. So it says during World War II in the South Pacific, in the South Pacific doctors did use coconut water as a substitute for blood plasma when supplies were low. Coconut water is sterile and has a similar electrolyte balance to human blood, making it a temporary solution for rehydration and electrolyte replenishment. However, it is important to note that coconut water is not a replacement for actual blood plasma. It should only be used in emergency situations when no other options are available. So doesn't quite uh, mention the, the ocean minerals, but... You know, it's it's similar, and I can see how it might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- thank you, Gordon. <laughs> no, it's pretty interesting stuff, though. Yeah. Okay. So before we start wrapping up, um, I would love to give you the opportunity to talk about anything else that is just burning, burning you right now that that you wanted to come on here and make sure that the listeners and the viewers uh, hear about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first thing I would just say is um, be mindful uh, when you hear about a low sodium diet, be mindful of your diet in totality and your general approach to nutrition. So you want to make sure that you're eating a well-balanced diet and that you are taking care of all of those things and not just looking for kind of a magic bullet, if you will, of, okay, I'm just going to start eating less salt and everything is going to change overnight. Um 
eating salt is a key part of the diet. It is the electricity, the energy of the body. Uh, if you stopped eating salt completely, you would perish. That would you, that would not work for you. Um, so it's important to think about these things in uh, in a holistic kind of comprehensive sense. Um, the second thing I would say, and this ties into to nutrition and food supply overall, is there's actually a second company that uh, we work for, and, and that company is actually uh, arguably a, a more important company. And so I'd love to talk about that for a couple minutes, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so Baja Gold was actually invented or dis- or discovered, if you will, because of this other company, which is called C90, and that's SEA-90. Um, at C90, so- this is to help remineralize our soils and remineralize our food supply. And we do that with the Sea of Cortez ocean water and with these ocean minerals um, but in the agriculture community. And so there was a, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Dr. Maynard Murray. So the genesis of all of this is a gentleman named Dr. Maynard Murray. And Dr. Murray was a, a medical doctor in the 40s and 50s. He started looking into why it seemed as though the rest of the world was advancing technologically, but health, human health was declining relative to all other things. And so, um, you know, during the 40s and 50s, I mean, we're, we're sending people to the moon, we're doing all of these incredible things, but the rate of cancer is going up, the rate of cellular disease is going up, and overall health and wellness is just not rising. And so he sought to understand why exactly that was and what he could do to reverse that trend. And after doing a lot of research, Dr. Murray discovered that the nutrient density, which is how healthy our food supply is, was decreasing pretty significantly relative to what it was 40 or 50 years ago. And so what I mean by that is if you take cow's milk and you look at the calcium or the magnesium in one quart of milk, it was 50 to 70% lower than it was 50 or 60 years prior. Same with your cereal grains, same with um, your vegetables, your produce. You would look at, gosh, the magnesium in this, the zinc in this, it used to be way up here. And now it's testing way down here. Why, why is that? What is going on? Um, and certainly during the, that time period, there was advances in commercial, conventional agriculture practices. Um, so you might have heard about you know, the, the proliferation of synthetic fertilizers, the idea of monocropping, which is planting one crop over and over and over again, um, significant tillage, which is the disruption of soil. All of these things led to not only what Dr. Murray was seeing, but also major historical events like the Dust Bowl, where the earth kind of says, hey, enough. This is ridiculous. I'm I'm taking my dirt and I'm going home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Not to generalize it, but that's what what was going on. Um, And so Dr. Murray said, all right, all of this is going on. There's got to be a solution to this. And at the same time, he also found, along with Rene Quinton and others, that the ocean was this incredible source of minerals and trace elements. Certainly for many, many years, you know, it has the term salt water. Many people just think it's just sodium chloride and water, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Ocean water is truly um, a natural miracle. It has all of the minerals and trace elements on the periodic table in perfect balance in ocean water. Um, And so Dr. Mm. Murray said, okay, it seems as though we might actually be so moving minerals from our lands, how can we use the ocean to put those minerals back into our soils and back into our food supply? And so he did some research and all of this is on C90.com. Um, but he started by actually just using ocean water itself. And as anyone in logistics uh, understands, he quickly figured out that shipping water is incredibly expensive and time consuming. And so he said, how can I concentrate this water down into something that's shippable into the Great Plains and into the Midwest so that we can use this product everywhere. And that's what led him to using ocean water from the Sea of Cortez and using these same salt flats that we actually use today. And so Dr. Murray and our founder, Robert Kane, they discovered all of this ultimately in the 70s and 80s and started using sea solids or ocean minerals in agriculture. And what they were able to do was reverse some of these worrying trends in nutrient density. Um, and corresponding to that, they also started to improve the fertility and the productivity of soil. 
Like, so everyone, everything I'm mentioning here is like an hour conversation on its own, I know. But he, you know, he took all of these minerals and trace elements, put them back into our food supply. And over time, you're able to improve the quality of that food, which then it also leads to better animal health quality. And then down the line, of course, ultimately human health is impacted as well. So um, C90, uh, please take a look at that if you do any backyard gardening um, or if you're a farmer yourself. Um, it is an incredible alternative to synthetic fertilizers, to conventional agriculture practices. Um, and we, we are part of a movement called regenerative agriculture. Yeah, a lot of people talk about sustainable agriculture. Um, unfortunately, given how some trends have gone, it's no longer enough to just sustain where we're at. We actually need to start regenerating and to you know, put one foot in front of the other and get back to where we were in terms of soil health and food nutrient density, and food uh, food chain supply quality. Well, listen, and while, while you were explaining all that, I had a big smile on my face because I, I feel like I've, at least in my orbit, am one of the few that talks about regenerative farming and this, this problem with, with the uh, topsoil. And, and, and th- there's a lot of companies out there that are trying to do it right, but this is the first that I've heard about C90 using ocean minerals to, to remineralize or to regenerate the, the land. And I think that's huge because if it's good enough to put in our bodies, it should be also good enough to put in our bodies, right? <laughs> Via food. And, and I also want to make sure that people understand that this is, this is not to be confused with C60, which is known as Buckminster Fullerene. This is C as in S-E-A, C90. Right. And um, and so we will put that in the link and, and Gordon had that pulled up in the website. But I think you guys are doing some major things with that. And maybe that's another another podcast episode we can we can uh, touch on in the future, because like you said, the, each of these topics Thanks, own, could be its own episode, you know. So I would love to see like do you guys have any um, Thanks, so. before and after or do you have any like um like images on, on the C90 website of like what you've done with some of the land. That would be really cool if you did. Yeah, I, uh, yes, I believe so. And if not, I can send you some stuff afterwards for sure. and Put them in the show notes, but, um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's interesting. It's not just necessarily a one is green and one is Brown kind of an approach. Um, what we're doing is, is kind of below the soil and it's more in the, like the sap analysis is the term they use for the plant tissue quality. Um, it's in the milk analysis of animals that graze on C90 versus those that don't graze on C90. Um, so it kind of, uh, it, it is both visual and also a little nuanced in kind of the technical detail as well, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. And I imagine there's also maybe a, a, a difference in color. Like what I've, what I've heard is that usually the healthier the soil, the darker the, the hue. Um, but you know something like saturated, yeah. It's yeah, more. There's a there's a cool story. Uh, Dr. Murray loved working with tomatoes um, because tomatoes are a fruit or vegetable that that intake a lot of minerals. They yeah. actually will take up sixty or more minerals to create like a genetically perfect tomato. Um, and so when you have those minerals available for that tomato, it tastes completely different than yep. like something off the store shelf that you know was was thirty five cents or whatever. Uh, of course, people will taste that after growing it in their garden. And then they're like, you know, Robert would tell the story of like people start crying. And he's like, why, why are you crying? And they said, I, I haven't tasted this since I was with my grandparents 60 years ago and they had their own garden and they did it the right way. And, you know, mm. you can, uh, again, a different topic, but you can call anything that is red and just somewhat resembles a tomato, a tomato. But that doesn't make it a tomato. It's what's inside that makes it a tomato. And so um, having those minerals available to the plant helps the plant express what it wants to be, uh, which seems like a little high and mighty here. But that's it's all about the genes having the minerals to construct what they want to construct. And if those things aren't available, the, 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 the plants, the fruit, the vegetable, it won't maximize what it could be. It's what what that reminds me of. So I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out because what that reminds me of is in the fitness space or in the physical therapy space. Like, you know, we as physical therapists or fitness trainers, we know that we can put a person in a certain shape, Thanks. who hopefully 
get them to, let's say, for instance, you got back pain. You go to a physical therapist. They tell you to get into a plank. That means you're making a shape. But just because you're making the shape doesn't mean that you're actually activating all the parts of the body that you need to activate, right? And so when you add in that level of awareness, just like you pointed out for the expression of a plant or expression of a, of a of person that's in front of you, that's when you're making the real changes, right? And the other thing that I think is a bit interesting that people don't realize is that, especially for all the vegans and vegetarians out there, this might be a, you know, a trigger warning for anybody listening, but what I should say is that the information that's being put out today is still based on result from back in the day when the vegetables were healthier. Sure. Yep. Right. Well, so, so we got to be careful with that. We got to be really careful. I don't know what happened to my video. I made some kind of, thanks. So. It's, I made some kind of gesture and it put up some bubbles. But anyway, uh, long story short, um, I think we should just be mindful that like the, the soil is not nearly as healthy today as it used to be. Doesn't mean that it's doom and gloom. It means that we just need to be mindful of it and we can change that. And the way to change that is to get more aware of. So uh, I'm happy you pointed that out because, you know, I think this will empower us instead of scaring us. It should. Thanks for percent. And, and the one thing I always tell people is wherever possible, learn and know where your food is being grown. Shake the hand of your farm. And you're in New York. I mean, I, I totally get it. You're in a big city and you're like, Michael, that's not going to happen, but you can happen. There are small see I do. There, you know, there's yeah, there's farmers. There's states. There you go. Yeah. And so to the extent you can, you, buying food from a farmer doesn't have to be in your mind the 50 acres in Iowa. Like there's like little farms of people doing it the right way all over the country. And that is where you're going to get food that is grown in native soil with native bacteria that's going to align with your gut health and your overall health and wellness. So just try and find and know the source of your food. And how about this? This is a kind of a, a wow for everybody listening and watching. But uh, both Michael and I were born in Oklahoma and talk about like having the ability to have amazing farmland, but they're screwing it up as well. Right. And so like even before this conversation, uh, it was a couple of years ago, I had set out and I, and I said had set out because there's been so many projects on the on the on my sort of platform right now that I've had to kind of hold off on this for a while. But I had this full sort of like business plan set to create a regenerative farm in my hometown of Chandler, Oklahoma. It's going to happen. But now knowing that you guys have the C90 might make that a little bit easier. So, uh, so yeah, so we'll have to definitely chat on that. And, you know, I know we're getting closer to the end here. I, I have a couple of questions I usually ask every guest that we have on the show. I did not get a chance to prep you on it. It's not like it's a ball bust or anything like that, but, um, Let's see what comes up. Let's do it. I'm ready. Okay. So uh, the first question is, what are your top one or two pet peeves? Like, what are a couple of things? It doesn't have to be about salt. It doesn't have to be about anything health related. It can just be about anything. But I like to ask this question because it it sort of allows a person to get a better insight into who I'm speaking with and allows me to understand more of who I'm speaking with. Thanks. Um, Sure. So what immediately comes to mind, and, and uh, 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 this is just a broad statement, I'm not, I'm not villainizing anyone here, but it's when people are unwilling to change or consider change because things have always been done that way. Um, mm -hmm. And so the context for that is I work primarily in farming and in agriculture, and there's this saying, well, why do you do it that way? Well, daddy did. Well, why did daddy do it that way? Well, granddad did it. And that is a real barrier to, uh, when you have that mindset, it's a barrier to change and it's a barrier to improvement. Mm. And so thankfully within the regenerative community, it's mostly people who are mind open, willing to consider new things because they know we need to consider change. Um, but one of my biggest pet peeves is when it's just, well, we've always, we've always done it that way. So, you know, kind of end of conversation and I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. yeah. People are resistant to change. I mean, that's, that's a great one, actually. Um, you know, we, we get a lot of funny ones. We get a lot of real ones. But that, I couldn't agree with you more. Like, it's, it's it, it, to be honest with you, it's why I wrote my book. It's why I do what I do. It's trying to allow people 
this, this, the journey of freeing themselves from certain thought patterns. And it starts with not being so stuck to that's the way it's been all the time. Exactly. So thank you for sharing that. Um, okay. Last question. One of my favorite questions, what is something you are most grateful for? Thanks. Uh, one thing I'm grateful for every day is I actually work in a family business. Um, I, I grew up with a younger brother. We're very close. My mom and father or my mom and dad were very close. And, uh, we started this journey with Sea Agri four years ago and, uh, we all had different careers. We were all doing different things, different vectors, and we all came together and said, "Hey, if we're gonna if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it now, or it's not gonna happen." Um, and so we all kind of jumped in. Uh, we all left different opportunities. A lot, you know, just left other things that could have been great things, and came together for um, a, a greater good as a family, and then hopefully a greater good, um, you know, culturally as well here and societally. Um, so that's one of the things I'm just grateful for and proud of and, and really just excited about, because not only do I think we're making bit by bit an impact, positive impact on the world, uh, but I'm doing it with family and, you know, setting hopefully a good example for, for my kids. And, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's my answer. Beautiful. That uh, well, one of the things before we go, um, I, and, and this just came to me right now, but I, I love, I'm such a curious person and I think that's why I'm where I am today because I love just being curious and diving into a lot of cool new things. One thing that I would love to, to research is Thanks there so. is a difference because maybe there is no difference, but is, is there a difference in the grounding effect of regenerative land versus Thanks regenerative so. land? Thanks so. yeah. That's something to, to look into because I, I consider myself a grounding expert. I'm doing a lot of, um, consulting with different companies that do grounding. I do a lot of testing with, with, uh, multimeters and with, with, with various other like, um, testing tools. And I would love to see if there's a difference because if, if we can see a difference in the quality and the nutrients that come out of that, out, out of said ground, then we should also be able to get a better activation of the grounding technique. Because one thing I can say is that I can tell you without a doubt, if a person is is hydrated properly, they're going to usually get a good grounding effect quite easily with the tools that I have in my home. And I do this all the time. It's like a party trick. And I have people come over, I test them and I'll put the test meter on myself. It lights up bright green. It's like the ultimate hydration and ultimate grounding effect. I put it on them and the light is either weak or no light at all. Thanks. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll go, here's the ocean minerals, you know, try this. Let that sit for a while and then let's see what happens. And it's like every time the light bulb comes on and they're like, oh, so I'd love to see, maybe we can work on that project together and stay in touch on it. But um, it would be kind of interesting to see if there is a difference. Maybe not. Yeah. yeah. No. And I immediately go to my, my farmer brain, right? Is like cation exchange capacity and organic matter are two um, metrics. So cation exchange capacity is kind of like the electricity level in your soil organic matter is the amount of like carbon and just overall soil versus dirt that you kind of have. Both of those things go up significantly with regenerative practices. Both of those things are going to help with grounding. So I, I love it. I think we should research it and get some data on it, but it absolutely should happen. We let's do that. Like I'm serious. Like when we get off the call, make sure we have each other's information. Cause I, I, I think that's huge. And the things that I know that I can't quite talk about yet that are in the works, that's, this is going to help, you know? So, so let's, let's do that. Um, okay. Last thing. Could you explain to people that are watching and listening the best ways to keep in touch with yourself, with the company, with everything that's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So our two companies are Baja Gold, Salt Co and C90. So for Baja Gold, that's B-A-J-A Gold, Salt Co. You can find us online. Uh, you can find us on pretty much all of the socials. Baja Gold, Salt Co is the handle. Uh, we're available through Shopify. Uh, Josh has an awesome promo code that he'll share and we're available in other places as well, but get it with Josh's code. And yeah. on C90, it is uh, like Josh mentioned, SEA-90. Um, so we have solutions for large scale farmers. Um, we send out literal truckloads of salt every day, but we also have products for the backyard gardener and homestead. Um, so even if you're just doing a couple of four by four raised beds, 
Uh, we have some small packages that will help improve the mineral uh, content of the fruits and vegetables you're growing. So check that out. Um, and if you're looking for us on socials for C90, it is uh, C90 without the dip. Beautiful. And for those that are curious, um, I have a discount code, Josh10. So that's BajaGoldSaltCode.com slash Josh10. So if you want to take advantage of a discount, also, you know, if you reach out to these guys online, let them know that you heard this podcast. Maybe we have some special things that we can do for you. And um, just stay in touch. Understand that not all salt is created equal. There are solutions. And we hope to uh, help you become more aware of your health through salt. So there we go. Mr. Michael Silic the third. thank you for your time. Very much appreciated. And uh, I look forward to staying in touch. Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks. So Simply walk the top. Walk the talk, talking facts Move like me, but I move a little fast Make my move, here to last Fast in these seatbelts, I'm coming past Take care of me, longevity Hack my biology, better believe Walking the talk, so mind and body connected Better come give us a listen